from Ted Turner. Ted Turner was changing television. So you and, had an eye on Turner early oh, on yeah, when right. he was because he started. He started a lot of the TV things we're, we're doing today, hmm. and uh, because it was very narrow until he he started, then people start other people started doing the same thing. And was this his uh, the super station? Is that what you're talking yeah. about? TBS. Yeah. Came online, and all of a sudden, there's one station instead of a local affiliate. He's a right. This station went everywhere. Yeah. Hmm. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I ended up uh, trying, you know, trying. I, I went to Art and I said, "Hey, I, I want us to go into to television. We, it, it's the future." The ca- into cable. Yeah, and uh, and he said no. So I resigned as president and started my own company. Wow. Started with a door and a telephone. I put a door on two. On two uh, painting racks, and uh, and I put a phone on it, and that was it. I started uh, that wow. way. Wow! And uh, uh, over a period of years, uh, I kept growing. You're producing commercials. You're producing. I produced sh- commercials of, uh, on a regular basis, and then I started developing shows. And uh, the National Network was going on the air, and. The president, uh, the president of the National Network, David, not president at that time, uh, the chief engineer over at Nashville was David Hall. So let me make sure our audience is understanding. So in the wake of Ted Turner's superstation, you have CNN coming online, and then Nashville decides they want a, a cable network. That's right. And uh, he calls me on the telephone. I, I would go. I used to go over to Nashville and edit at night because it was cheaper. Wow! And the chief engineer would uh, he would do the two of us, David Hall, would go out to dinner. Ah. And then once he told me, he said, "Hey, we're getting ready to start our own network, and I'm going to be the president." <laughs> and I said, "Well, that's great." And so a few weeks later, he called me and he said, "Come over here. I, I need your help." So I go over there. And he said, I need a sitcom. Could you? So I developed a show called I-40 Paradise. And uh, we shot it here in Knoxville in a warehouse. And a train would come by. You might remember that. At (laughs) 3 o'clock. Stop everything. (laughs) And uh, most of the talent came from Nashville, really, uh, the Nashville area. So a lot of what we talk about on this podcast is, uh, you know, pivots or detours or decisions that you make. So you coming out of how was producing this sitcom for a new cable network, how that compared to your experience being at NBC in New York in the 50s, early 60s? Because this, this is a pretty big change up, right? No? Yeah, it is. It is. Uh I remember it, and talking to to David. Uh, I said, "What kind of budget do we have?" And he said, twenty five thousand dollars a half hour." And I said, "God, it, <laughs> he said, for that kind of money, we have to because I had been in television quite a while. Uh, he said, I, "I don't care how you do it. All you're going to get is twenty five thousand dollars." Wow. So then I had to figure out how we could do the show in one day. That way we did four shows a week. So compared to like a uh, NBC approach. We'd do a week. They take one week to do one show. That's right. They tell you you're doing one show in one day. In one day. And I don't know what the budget would have been like for an NBC sitcom. Well, Com- yeah. Well, this budget was $25,000. Right. And Which you- is probably not even right. It's quite a bit less than an NBC budget. Yeah. Oh yeah, so I, that was, uh, uh, and then of course I, uh, you know, I worked with Roy Rogers for for thirty two years, and mm. I was with Roy up in Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania, and uh, his agent said to me, "I saw the most talented young man this past week that you wouldn't believe," and I said, "I need a a young <laughs> singer and, and a, a musician for a band leader." And he said, uh, oh, I've got his phone number, and he gave me your phone number, and I called you. 
and you sent, I asked you to send me a tape. You sent me a tape. And I remember <laughs> asking you, who, what kind of band did you have? And you said, I didn't have a band. I played all the instruments. And I <laughs> right. said, you're the guy for me. <laughs> and, and so uh, you came down and became a part of I-40 Paradise. We did 65 shows in a season, mm-hmm. and you did six seasons. So that was 390 episodes of I-40 Paradise. We got a spinoff called Picking at the Paradise, mm-hmm. which was, uh, we did two seasons of that, so that was 130 episodes. And I tell people, you know, now, Ross, when they record live, you know, you can go back and tune vocals. And I said, we did six to seven songs per show, two shows a day of picking. Mm-hmm. Sure uh, did. So it was fantastic training. And a lot of guest stars we had on there. We really did. Reba McIntyre, uh, Hoyt Axton, we were saying, was yes. on there. Reba later became my neighbor in Florida, and I could hear her singing on the back porch. <laughs> Reba. 